With the addition of base game infants and the add-ons with growing together, I think it's time we took a moment to talk about infants. If something I'm talking about is included with growing together, you'll see the symbol at the top of the screen. Otherwise, it'll be about base game infants. As you might know, infants are a new baby life stage in The Sims 4. On a normal length setting, this life stage lasts for 5 days, on short it's 2, and on long it's 20. You can choose one personality trait for them. The traits you can choose from include sensitive. This infant is prone to diaper rashes. They're picky with their food and can be easily overstimulated when they play or interact with others. However, they rest more peacefully through the night when soothed. Sunny. This little sim smiles, giggles, and enjoys engaging with others. They will require more social attention though. Wiggly. These babies are always on the go. They want to play and move about. They do struggle to fall asleep or pay attention for extended periods of time. Calm. Calm infants enjoy watching the world and are less likely to cry or become angry. They don't grow tired of activities as easily as other infants, but they are less likely to explore the world on their own. Cautious. When you have a cautious infant, they appreciate the familiar and are slow to warm up to new experiences, locations, and sims. Intense. Intense infants have big emotions and are easily entertained. They are more difficult to calm when in a bad mood. You can see the infant's trait in this panel here. In addition, infants will gain quirks throughout gameplay. These include early riser, snuggly sleeper, hates bedtime, loves wake up time, hates wake up time, gassy, messy eater, picky eater, good appetite, frequently hiccups, frequently sneezes, loves being held, hates being held, feeding tinkler, free air tinkler, self, soother, happy spitter, loves sounds, and little babbler. Toddlers can also gain quirks. Toddler quirks include aggressive, charmer, little singer, loves being carried, loves water, loves wake up time, good appetite, and loves sounds. I found that infants needs go from 0 to 100 real quick, especially when they're tired. It's very important to keep an eye on their needs and check back often due to this. Another thing I realized while playing was that my infant's moodlets were almost always a plus two, plus three, sad or angry, when one or more of their needs are low. As I said, check back in often because it's super duper important to keep their needs high. If you own parenthood, don't forget that taking care of an infant will increase your adult sim's parenting skill. This is pretty handy if you like exploring the parenting options that the pack gives you. When your child's diaper gets dirty, or if you're just thinking ahead, you can change your infant's diaper. With the Laundry Day Stuff Pack, you can use cloth diapers, so when you change it, you get a pile of dirty clothes. When you change their diaper close to the hamper, the pile should go inside the hamper automatically, but that didn't always work out for me as I played. Unfortunately, when changing a diaper, just standing up like this one, the dirty diaper will always go onto the ground and the Sims will not automatically clean it up. It might be more useful to change their diaper at a change table. A neat trick with this is that you can link a diaper pail or laundry hamper on either side of the change table. That way, if you pick it up, those items move alongside with it. Another cool thing about the change table is that when you use it, your Sims won't leave dirty diapers or laundry lying around. Which, is, Which awesome. is awesome. If you don't change your infant's diaper right away, their hygiene need will be greatly affected. At this point, you'll need to give them a bath instead. This can take place in a bathtub or in the sink. To satisfy your infant's fun need, you'll need to ensure that you have some toys that they can access, although they might end up playing in household items like this, resulting in a mess. Just keep an eye out for that. It can happen without you noticing all the time. And it gets quite messy. You can breastfeed or bottle feed an infant. Plus, you can actually choose a preference. This way your sim will automatically do your preference when they go to take care of their child. Once your child is able to sit upright, they can also be put into a high chair and explore purees and then finger foods. As you explore these options, you'll find out what food options your infant loves, likes, is neutral on and needs to try again to see if they like it or not, or dislikes. If you don't have growing together, you can explore purees pretty much immediately. You don't need to wait to hit that milestone. These foods can give your infant a few different moodlets. If they eat foods that they like, they'll receive positive ones. But if they eat the same food over and over again, they'll get a sad moodlet from food boredom. I feel you, little baby. I get that too. If you try to feed them food that they dislike, they can either get a mad moodlet from the betrayal, or they might refuse the food, resulting in a mess on the ground. 
An infant's social need can be filled by interacting with other sims, including other infants and toddlers. They can also interact with cats and dogs. There are some adorable interactions with infants, so I urge you to try them all out just to see them all. Don't forget that infants can gain sentiments. My first one was a positive one where they were fascinated with their mother and I thought that was incredibly sweet. Not only that, but your infant will gain positive moodlets around that sim if they have a positive sentiment, which can really help with their overall mood. If your infant is sleepy, you can place them in a crib to sleep, have them sleep in your arms, or let them sleep on their playmat. You might have to soothe them, tell them a bedtime story, or kiss them goodnight to help settle them in. Another way to help settle them down would be by upgrading the crib to include one of these options. This does cost 100 simoleons, and your sim does need to have a level 1 handiness skill. Since infants need to sleep throughout the day, it might be wise to have a portable crib in your adult sim's inventory. It'll be very useful if you're off the lot and you're doing things and your baby needs to nap. Although I do have to admit, it's kind of weird to come across this out there in the wild. I don't think anyone in real life would do something like this. You just see somebody with a portable crib inside a Tim Hortons and you're like, Yep, that's pretty normal. I found this option, the kiss goodnight, to be absolutely adorable. How sweet is that? Lastly, once your infant ages up, you can upgrade your crib to a toddler bed. Your sim will have to be a level 2 in the handiness skill to complete this, and it will cost you 50 simoleons, but it's pretty awesome. As I played, I experienced a few issues, especially surrounding fulfilling my infant's needs. I would try to click on, that say, the high chair to put the infant in it, but that action would be deleted without being completed. The same thing goes with the change table and very rarely with the crib. There are other ways around this. You can click on pick up infant and then place them in the high chair or whatever you want. You might have to play as an infant and select the actions to fulfill their needs because that seems to work better for some reason. I don't know. It's pretty annoying though. Don't forget that you do have the option to check an infant. This will help the sim figure out what needs need to happen to ensure the infant is doing all right. Another thing to keep in mind would be where your baby is at. Infants can crawl down small steps and platforms, but they cannot go downstairs. You might want to use locked doors or gates to keep your baby or toddlers in infant appropriate yes areas. But they might break out of it. Why should you take care of your infants? Okay, whoa. First of all, you do it because they're cute. Right? But there are other reasons why you should do it too. Bonus traits. If your sim is well cared for, there are three bonus traits that they might receive once they've aged up into a toddler. The best one, top-notch infant, means they were loved and well cared for. This trait will occasionally give you a plus one happy moodlet. Happy infant means that they were cared for, just not as good. Unhappy infant is the result of a baby not being cared for. The way you earn one of these is when you age up your infant, the game will automatically check to see how many times the sim had particular moodlets, such as need met, well cared for, love shown, loved, is anyone there, and needs help. Therefore, your sim receives a reward trait depending on how many times your sim had those moodlets. And something about attachment with a caregivers, because the moodlets are kind of based on that. The positive reward traits will give bonus positive moodlets. On the other hand, the negative one will decrease the likelihood of particular social interactions succeeding, like apologizing. These reward traits affect the gain rate of sentiments, the good ones will increase good sentiments, and the bad one increases the bad sentiments. Honestly, these traits don't really impact gameplay that much, but it is easy to make sure that they get a positive trait. If you're actively trying to take care of them and give them extra love and attention, you'll most likely get one of the positive ones. Once again, this makes it important to check back in on your infant's needs and moodlets often. You want them to be in the green with good moodlets. You might notice that a well cared for infant won't cry if they're neglected a little bit. This is because they already have a secure attachment to their caregivers forming. Neglected babies will feel even more neglected. It's important to note that base game infants have no skills. Infant skills came along with growing together. Even then, they're not called skills, they're actually milestones. You don't have access to the skill panel as an infant. To unlock milestones, you'll need to complete different actions. To find out what actions you need to do, you can hover over grayed out milestones in the Symology panel. Some milestones will naturally be completed through basic care and interactions. You might not even try for them, yet they're completed. It's pretty cool. 
The more milestones you achieve, the more your infant can do. That's for sure. And you'll be able to progress further with other milestones. For example, you can't place an infant in a high chair to fulfill their first food milestone if they can't sit up. They can't sit upright if they don't have neck control. You'll probably notice the visible changes to your infant as they achieve gross motor milestones. To achieve the ones from this category, you'll need to participate in things like tummy time, practice standing, or practice crawling. Social milestones are achieved by observing and partaking in social interactions. If you notice a new interaction pop up for your baby, I highly suggest doing it. It will help. The reason why you want to complete all of the milestones is because the infant will eventually get to move around more easily, engage in different ways, have additional interactions, and eventually unlock skill bonuses as a toddler. If all of them are complete, the infant will be at level 2 on each of the toddler skills. This can help reduce the time spent on those skills during the toddler stage. Oh. I guess this update kind of makes it so all of my super sim, super villain, super vampire videos are a little outdated. Just a wee bit, eh? Oh well, ain't that just the way. It's been nice discussing the cutest new additions to The Sims 4. If I missed anything, please comment it down below. Not only does it help me out, but it also helps out fellow simmers. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this. Until next time, see you later. Peace out. Bye.